In this tutorial, we're going to look at ways to bring in pictures of trees uh, and create shadows for those trees in Photoshop perspectives. Vegetation like trees and shrubs and grasses are great candidates to composite in Photoshop because oftentimes the photographs are going to look much better than what you can model in a uh, modeling program like SketchUp or in this case 3ds Max. Now there are some advanced renderers uh, like Lumion and other plugins like V-Ray that can uh, supplement this and actually create some really great stuff. But in this case, we're going to look at Photoshop as a tool for bringing in trees into this perspective. First thing I'm going to do is actually go to a tree that I've uh, downloaded from online and I'm going to click on the channels and find the alpha channel so that I can control click on this icon, go back to the layer, copy and paste this into my scene. I'm going to drag it up to the top uh, just so I can begin to work with it use uh, Control T or Command T on my Mac to actually change the size. Often the first thing that you're going to do is, is get roughly the, the right size of this tree in your scene. You might stretch it if you need to, holding down Shift so that you can make it a little bit wider. Uh, and in this case, I'm probably going to sneak it behind uh, the juniper right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of this. I'm going to save it for a little later. I'll move it off to the side. This is actually something I'm going to use for uh, the shadow itself. So I'll turn that layer off. Now with anything that you bring into your Photoshop perspective, you probably need to adjust the lighting to help it sort of fit into the scene. Now I'm still in the early stages of this perspective, so I don't have a lot to work around. But I can always go to Image Adjustments uh, and either affect the levels, the curves, hue and saturation, uh, just to get the colors of this to kind of match up with my scene. In this case, I'm probably going to grab the curves and pull this off to the side and just brighten it up a little bit. Let's say OK here. Now I continue to bring in trees to fit in the other planners and any other objects that I'm going to composite in this scene. At this point though, I want to go back to that layer that I turned off earlier, the duplicate of the tree. I'm going to drag it up a little higher. I'm going to command click or control click if you're on a PC on this layer icon so that we put a marquee all around this. We'll go to edit and fill. We're going to fill with the contents of black right here. We'll say OK. Now, this is actually going to serve as our shadow. So I'll deselect this, use control T, and I want to turn it a little bit sideways in this case. Now the first thing you need to look for is in your scene which way the shadows are going and oftentimes this is generated by your 3D modeling program. In this case, we've got the sun coming from the top right to the bottom left. So I'm going to turn it in this general direction. This tree shadow is not believable though, so I'm going to right click inside and go to distort. What this allows me to do is kind of play with these settings right here so that I can make it appear as if this shadow is sitting flat on the ground. This takes some practice. Uh, sometimes you even need to zoom out so that you can distort and pull this uh, in a lot of different directions. We'll get it close, and I can continue to fiddle with this, but just for these purposes, we're going to say Enter uh, to finish our transform and leave it right here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit again, reposition the shadow. Now you notice that the shadow that we have in here uh, already from our modeling program uh, is not as, as stark as this solid color, so we can start to turn down the opacity uh, just to get it to, to kind of lay a little lighter in the scene. I might even come back, grab my lasso tool to delete out where that shadow overlaps with this shadow right here. Now in some cases this might be all you need for a tree shadow, uh, but there are other times where maybe it uh, cuts across a wall or an elevated surface and you might grab your lasso tool again and uh, move this shadow to make it appear as if it's hopping up onto a higher element. I'll undo that though and show another technique where we actually might go to a filter. We'll go to filter, blur, and motion blur. And in here we can actually set the angle of the motion and set the distance to uh, kind of blur that shadow just a little bit to where it doesn't feel as perfect uh, and crisp on the ground. So in this case, I'm going to dial it back just a little bit to get a, a subtle blur. And we'll say OK to that. We could continue that for the other elements in the scene. Now it's also important to remember that shadows uh, sometimes have different color tones to it. If the drawing is a little warmer, maybe it's uh, a darker orange instead of a, a, a black in here. In my case, uh, what I like to do often is actually use a deep purple color. So I'm actually going to click my foreground color, go to my purple range, and kind of do a deep uh, purple uh, as the shadow color here. We'll go to edit 
and fill and fill with in this case the foreground color and say okay you know this has a little bit more of a purple tint to it and I could probably try this out a few different times to make it even a little darker potentially even multiply it on there so this is one technique for uh, inserting trees into your perspective renderings and creating shadows that help them tie into the rest of that perspective